Okay, let's talk access requests. Access requests are the way to get permission uh, above member inside of IPSA. Now this is a role that was previously held by the past chief of a brigade. Perhaps in MCOM there was a past chief. Someone who was the administrator of Milpo. Um, the HIMS manager would be the person who granted access to EDS, Topmas, things like that. Now all that's gonna be done in IPSA and actually the lowest level user can request their own access. Um, but you can also request access on behalf of somebody. So that's really what we are used to as past chiefs uh, and email po uh, administrators in, uh, with legacy systems is that I could grant access to you from my computer. You didn't have to submit anything necessarily. So that's what we're gonna do in this next series of videos is we're going to submit an access request on behalf of someone uh, what we're going to do is we're going to log in as an HR pro for the battalion and request data user access for one of the company clerks. Um, so essentially what happened is Alpha Company or Bravo Company's, um, you know, training room clerk moved on and somebody else came in and we have to grant access uh, as an HR data user uh, inside of IPSA. And then we'll also log in as a validator and approve that request. And then we'll, we'll show you some other neat stuff inside of there. But before we get too far into it, uh, what I'd like to do is show you how to get the role matrix. And so you have, you have categories or subcategory permission categories in IPSA, promotions, supervisor, things like that. And each of those has a default list of, or a default menu of things that they can do inside of IPSA. So not only can you give someone a subcat role, but you can um, check and uncheck what permissions inside of that subcat role that they have, but really what you need to know first is what they are. So you can pull down that matrix right from IPSA as an HR professional. So we're logged in as an HR pro at the battalion. We're simply gonna click on the nav bar, navigator, and we're gonna go to IPSA security right here, and we're gonna click on the role matrix. And this is just gonna pull up an Excel spreadsheet that you can download and look at, and it shows you for each subcat, what are the permissions uh, for that for that role inside of that subcat. And you'll notice there's a lot of uh, crossing streams. And so what comes up is this sort of embedded worksheet spreadsheet. Each of these tabs represents the subcat you can choose inside of the access request. And then these roles that are underneath it represent the permission, if you will, for that subcat. And as you see, when you have an X, this X also represents that it exists inside of this compliance monitor subcat. So this is where that segregation of, <clears throat> segregation of duty comes into play. Um, you don't wanna have multiple permissions. You don't wanna be able to edit one thing and view something else, right? You want, if you're a view only, then you're a view only entirely, uh, or you're an edit only. So you don't wanna have, you wanna have a segregation of duty so that you're not updating something that you should only be able to see uh, with a different subcat. So as we go across, you can see, now what I believe we can do is we can download this to Excel by clicking this little icon here, and we can pull up an Excel spreadsheet, and it, it's probably easier to maneuver through. So we'll just go ahead and save it here under my documents. And I, I, would, I would encourage you to, to log on and take a look at that, understanding what the subcats are, and then you know what those permissions are underneath. And some of this stuff probably won't make sense because it's all in uh, IPSA code, once you start to go through it, you'll be able to start sort of binning it where under which which it belongs. And I think that'll help you understand what those permissions represent. Uh, I think the Excel spreadsheet, my computer's not pulling it up right now, but I think the Excel spreadsheet all the way to the right gives a little bit more detail as to what that role really does. So that may be helpful too when you are, if you are a validator and you're starting to try to figure out what things people should be able to do. What we'll do now is we're going to go back and create an access request on behalf of that soldier from the company. So in order to do that, we're back at the home screen. I'm gonna click on HR professional because if I do an access request under self-service, it's gonna be for me, but I'm trying to do it on behalf of someone. So you wanna make sure that you switch to HR professional and put in an access request so you can submit it on behalf of someone else. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And so I am going to put in that individual's operator ID to find them hit the retrieve button and nothing shows up because there's nothing pending for that person. Now, you can't submit 
you can't put in another access request if there's already one pending and the system will tell you that in a little bit but the real reason we did that was so that this new access request button shows up to be able to click it so we go ahead and pop that in there and what we can do here a couple things it gets us give us the employee information who it's for it talks about what unit they're in so this person is an hhc and we're going to grant them access for hhc the company right uh, we can start the effective date and the end, end date. So obviously I think the effective date would be today. The expiration date, if you only want them to have access for a year, you can do that if you want them to have access for two years, however long you want to do it. Uh, and then the contact phone. I, I'd recommend you put in their, their office phone number. Right now what we see is that the current settings is that this individual is just a member, which means they just exist inside of IPSEC. We can see here that if we click on the show new roles or if we show current roles it's going to say the same thing these are the roles that were on that spreadsheet for a member and so if we click on show new roles it will be the same until we add a new security setting or a new subcat so like i said we're going to make this person a uh, hr professional data user for the company so all we do is we click on this plus sign and we select the search menu, we select HR professional, and then we select the subcategory menu and we will pick HR data user. Now, when we select show new roles, all of the areas that are being added, all of the roles that are being added for that subcat are now you're eligible to unclick or click. So if I uncheck them, then they wouldn't be able to do that specific role even though they are an HR data user. So if we refer back to our absence request videos, one of the things we noted was that the supervisor ID was anybody who was a commander, manager, or HR data user. So if a commander wanted to have HR data users in their company but not let them be able to approve leave, you could slide on down this menu and uncheck the absence approver key, and that would prevent data users in the company from approving leaves. It would, resist, it would reside strictly with the commander and the manager in this scenario. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uncheck that. We don't want the company clerk be, having the ability to approve leaves or absences uh, for their company. So once we've done that, we can just click this disable new roles and it'll sort of move things up. And then we come down to the ELM verification and the SOD verification. ELM verification means, did they complete the training? And if you click verify, it will reach out to ELM, make sure that they completed the HR data user training or the necessary training for the subcat role you're trying to give them and make it a yes. If they didn't, you have to click no and provide justification. I, I highly encourage validators to not allow this to occur. All they have to do is complete the training. It's not super intensive. It's something that they should do. There should be very, very, very few cases when you wanna override that. Um, the only one that comes to mind for me is they completed the training, but they're having a problem with ELM and they've shown you that they've completed the training. For some reason, they need the access now. The CRM ticket is taken forever and you know that they completed the training. That would be a good, a good uh, use of a sort of an override. And then the SOD verification. And again, SOD verification just means that there's not conflicting roles. When that SOD doesn't concur, right, there is an issue with the segregation of duties, the validator admin has to make that approval. Um, so what we're gonna do is in order to get around the ITE because there is no ELM inside of it, we're kind of gonna do this backwards. Um, but you're not, you wouldn't want to do it this way. You would want to do the ELM first and then the SOD in the production environment or even the OTE. Um, you know, Sergeant Moore is taking over as HHC uh, training room clerk. Okay, and we hit submit. And now we see this message where we cannot start a new request until this one is approved. And we talked about that a little bit earlier. Now it's just reminding you that you can't submit a new access request until this one is completed. So we click OK. And now we see that this access request for Sergeant Ferrer is pending approval. What we'll do next is we'll log in as a validator at the brigade level uh, and approve this access request 
that the HR Pro submitted on behalf of a member. The process for requesting access as a member themselves is ex exactly like this. It's performed exactly like this. Um, but until I would, I would recommend that validators and HR Pros until IPSA becomes a little bit more f familiar within the Army, that you submit these requests for them. Um, so that you're ensuring they're getting the right roles and the right subcategories uh, and that doesn't become just clickology and you're moving through it to approve it. Um, <clears throat> plus it helps, you know, it, whatever policies you've created for your organization, it helps to sort of reinforce those. Like we showed with removing the absence request approval authority um, for HR data users at the company level. So you can sort of set your policies based on what these roles do and what these subcats do and then you can use the access request to sort of enforce that within your organization. I appreciate what you guys are doing out there. I appreciate you watching our videos. Go ahead and like, subscribe, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think, what else you want to see. We're on S1Net and MillTube as well. Defend and serve.